So here we've got a slightly more complicated denominator, and so finding the common denominator is a little more difficult. But the idea is if we've got a polynomial in the denominator, we factor those things as much as we possibly can. And so for the first term, the 6 over y plus 3, there's not really anything to do there. And likewise, for the 2 over y, there's not really much anything we can do there. But for the 5y minus 3, now we recall that the y squared minus 9 is the difference of squares. And so that one will factor as y plus 3 and y minus 3. And so the kind of thing that you're remembering in that case is that if I had the difference of squares, so a squared minus b squared, that one will factor as a plus b and a minus b. So that's kind of the difference of squares formula that we need to remember. So a difference of squares. Okay. So that once we have this, now it's a little easier to see what our common denominator is going to be. So our LCD in this case is going to be, I need a y, I've got a y plus 3, and then for the second term, I've already got a y plus 3, so I don't need another one, but I do need a y minus 3. So now my LCD is going to be y times y plus 3 and y minus 3. So what we want to do then is to go through and clear out all of our denominators. So if I clear out all my denominators by multiplying by my LCD, I've got y times y plus 3 times y minus 3 times my 6 over y plus 3. Then I've got y times y plus 3 times y minus 3 times my 2 over y. Then over on the right-hand side, I have my y times y plus 3 times y minus 3 times my 5y minus 3 divided by y plus 3, y minus 3. And so what happens in these cases is that now in the first one, when I've got a y plus 3 on the bottom, my y plus 3s cancel each other out. When I have a y on the bottom, my y cancels out. And when I have a y plus 3 and a y minus 3 on the bottom, both of them are going to cancel out. And so what I end up with is just, in the first term, I've got 6 times y times y minus 3. Then I'm left with a 2 times y plus 3, y minus 3. And then on the right-hand side, I've got a y times 5y minus 3. And so now all my denominators are gone. This is just kind of one big polynomial equation that I just have to expand and then solve from there. So now if I expand everything and kind of collect all of my terms together to see what I have, I distribute my 6y to both terms. So that's going to give me a 6y squared minus 3 times 6 gives me 18y. Plus, now I've got 2 times a, if I multiply that out, it's going to give me a y squared minus 9. And then over on the right hand side, I distribute my y and I have 5y squared minus 3y. Well, I can continue and just distribute that 2 so that I've got a 6y squared minus 18y plus 2y squared minus 18 is equal to 5y squared minus 3y. So over on the left-hand side, I can combine my y squared. So it's 6y squared plus 2y squared gives me an 8y squared, then a minus 18y and minus 18. Over on the right-hand side, I have 5y squared minus 3y. So now I can move all of my terms over to one side, 
And so what that happens when I scoot when I subtract both 5y squared and 3y on both sides, I'm going to get an 8y squared minus 8y minus 18 minus 5y squared and then plus 3y equal to 0. So now I can still combine like terms. So now I've got 8y squared minus 5y squared gives me a 3y squared. Minus 18y plus 3y gives me a minus 15y. So those terms are done. And then I've got a minus 18 equal to 0. And so here's the equation that I need to solve. So here I notice that all the terms have a factor of 3 in them. So I can think about factoring 3 out. And so I have y squared. 15 divided by 3 gives me 5y. And 18 divided by 3 gives me 6. And so what I really need to solve then is just this equation. y squared minus 5y minus 6 is equal to 0. Okay, so now... I could either use the quadratic formula on that one, or I could <laughs> factor it if it's kind of easy to factor. Um, but in this case, that doesn't necessarily happen. So using the quadratic formula on it, we've got our discriminant, our b squared minus 4ac. So that's going to give us a minus 5 squared, 4 times 1 times negative 6. So we get a 25 plus... 24, so that's going to give us a 49. Square root of d, square root of 49, gives us 7. So I've got solutions of negative b plus the square root of d over 2a. So that's going to give me a 5 plus 7 over 2 times 1. So that's going to give me 12 over 2. And so I have y is equal to 6 as one solution. Then for the other one, negative b minus the square root of d over 2a. So I have 5 minus 7 over 2, which is going to give me a negative 2 over 2. And so for my other solution, I get negative 1. And so again, the only thing that I'm really checking in this case, I need to check that the solutions don't make the denominator zero. Which, kind of going back to my original equation, I see that um, I had y plus 3, y squared minus 9, and y in the denominator. So neither of those values are going to make the denominator 0. And so in this case, I have two solutions of 6 and negative 1.